Good evening and welcome to our Masaiya. Our headlines for tonight are the following. The West is turning the U.S. Security Council to a space that aims to demonize Hamas and Macron calls for international coalition to counter Hamas. In the second segment, we will focus on the Israeli uh, uh, preparation for the, for the ground offensive in Gaza and the negotiations over hostages. Welcome. Again, the situation in the Middle East is exacerbating and the war in Gaza could expand. These are the concerns that were expressed by Antonio Guterres, the UN chief during the session of the UN Security Council today that focused on Hamas and Israel's war. He said that this war did not emerge from uh, nowhere. It was the result of a long-standing occupation. The Jordanian Foreign Minister Ayman al safadi said that this war could reflect the, a wrong image of the fact that this war is between Arabs and the Jews or Western Westerners. The representative of the uh, Palestinian Authority said that the Palestinians on, on the occupation territories have the right to defend themselves and to resist. Israel is committing war crimes in Gaza, and the priority today is to put an end to those massacres. The UN Security Council should act in order to prevent those massacres and to prevent the displacement of thousands of hundreds uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, Gazans. Anthony Blinken on his uh, side called for the release of the hostages mm -hmm. and he also called the members of uh, the Security Council to make sure that Iran will not attack the U.S. and its allies. He said that the U.S. doesn't seek a war with Iran but if uh, Iran or its proxies attack uh, the U.S. personnel anywhere, uh, uh, we will defend our people, we will defend our security. That's why I am asking the U.S. Security Council members to prevent this from happening. The security of the region is now at risk, and the only way to reach peace in the region is, of course, to establish the two-state solution or to implement the two-state solution. The Russian representative claimed that the West is responsible for this exacerbation, and he also said that the draft resolution will allow Israel to commit more massacres. This is the uh, Russian representative saying that this uh, violent and aggressive attack was shocking, but it is the result of the Western uh, country's action. The new draft resolution will allow Israel to attack Gazans in an uh, unlimited way. We have to reach a ceasefire that is equal for both parties. That's why we cannot support this draft resolution. These are these are the main themes that we will be tackling today with our guests from Washington. Political analyst Dr. Khaled Safouri. From London, Dr. Papadopoulos, the host, is introducing you. And from Amman, Jordan, also a political analyst, Dr. Olaib. We will start with Dr. Khaled Safouri from Washington. A military mobilization, American mobil uh, military mobilization, uh, also American uh, diplomatic efforts. Uh, that were reflected by the uh, draft resolution presented by the uh, by uh, Anthony Blinken, a uh, draft resolution that neglected the humanitarian uh, 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 situation of uh, Gazans. Based on all of this, what is the U.S. trying to do? What is the main goal of the U.S. today, and what are the concerns of the U.S. today? Good evening to you and to your guests. Of course, the U.S. is supporting Israel, and it has been dragged to this war, despite the fact that the U.S. is stating openly that it doesn't want to be dragged into a war, but it has sent uh, soldiers, it has sent military um, equipment. So the U.S. is already dragged into this war because its actions are not aligned with its statements. 
on the other hand america is providing a cover for israel and it is supporting israel during its war against gazans against civilian palestinians and the u s. did not condemn during all of those years the violations of the international law that is ongoing on the occupied territories by settlers by the israeli soldiers and i think that everyone knows the real position of the u s. everyone knows the real image of the u s. and we all know that those who will support the u s. in this position are the allies of the u s. whether they are western countries or arab countries so i think that the situation is the same and all of them are neglecting the lives of the palestinians that are being of course killed In addition to that, so the fact that Western countries are refusing to support ceasefire proves that they are in full support of Israel. But what is the goal? What is the main goal of the U.S.? You talked about the fact that they tried to neglect the humanitarian situation and they were not clear. They were very ambiguous while talking about the massacres that were uh, that are, of course, happening in Gaza. And uh, those massacres, this genocide that is ongoing was not even mentioned and uh, also they did not mention the ceasefire. How, how can we analyze all of this? What is the goal of the U.S. Uh, by, of course, trying to extend uh, uh, the length of uh, this genocide? Also, this draft resolution that was uh, presented, uh, what is the goal of this draft resolution? As, you, as we said, uh, the U.S. wants to provide a diplomatic and a political coverage for uh, the Israelis' actions. The U.S. had always been neglecting uh, the war crimes that are being perpetrated by Israelis in occupied Palestine and people in occupied territories are being... Uh, imprisoned and detained for publishing posts on social media even before the beginning of this war people are being detained for very uh, realistic reasons so if we listen today to what Blinken said it is a very realistic speech and they are neglecting the suffering of the Palestinians that is a, an ongoing suffering since decades Palestinians are facing a brutal violation of international law on a daily basis since deca decades and today this those violations turned into genocide so we have also noticed that the statements that were published by uh, arab countries uh, today are the result of the american pressures the, those countries are afraid of the u.s they are afraid also of the anger and the frustration of the population that's why they are trying to condemn hamas to make sure that the u.s is still supporting them and also on the other hand condemning the genocide and mr intawi i would like to know your opinion on this do you think that the u.s wants to extend the length of this war on gaza do you think that the u.s wants for the genocides to be maintained to be continued and also i would like to know your opinion on the arab's position we have uh, heard what the jordanian representative and the palestinian representative said they uh, highlighted the importance of a ceasefire and they warned from the of, or of the consequences of uh, the expansion of this war and they also talked about the fact that this war could turn into a war between Arabs and Westerners. Uh, good evening to you, Rania. Good evening to your guests and to your audience. I would like to comment at first uh, on what your guests have said that the U.S. is has some kind of ma mandate over Israel. Uh, it is some kind of a guardian angel or a, 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 it has some kind of guardianship uh, over Israel and it is, of course, managing the actions of Israel. And Blinken came to Israel as a Jew and not as the Secretary of State of the U.S. And 
all of those issues should be highlighted for us to understand the real position of the U.S. The U.S. wants for all the world and for the Arab countries to stand against the resistance in Gaza, this resistance that is now very much resilient and capable of facing this brutal aggression of Israel. And let's not forget the fact that uh, the Palestinians, also the civilians, are resilient today. Also, during the Cairo summit, the Jordanian king said, and it was quite shock shocking, he said that the Arab blood and the Palestinian blood is not valuable as much as the uh, Israeli blood and the Western blood. He tried to adopt a very diplomatic speech, but it was quite shocking for us because he said that there is some kind of hypocrisy on the international level and that the international law it is not value and the uh, human lives in the Arab world and in the Muslim world. world. And he also said that this war is some kind of war against Arabs and Muslims. And I have talked about this repeatedly in Amman. I am sensing a new type of imperialism, an imperialism that is more aggressive uh, than before. And I am uh, also sensing some kind of... So uh, during this war, I am feeling a, a, a vibe of the Crusaders. Uh, if you look at the brutality of this war and if you focus on the speech and the rhetoric adopted by Western countries, you notice that they are very aggressive and brutal. And uh, the real image, the real face of those Western countries is now being exposed. They are being exposed as the partners of Israel in its war against civilians in Gaza. Why is why are those Western countries uh, doing this? Because they know that this, this is an existential uh, conflict if uh, the resistance in Gaza end up being victorious, uh, the Israeli entity will face a, a huge decline and the, uh, the standards that are now being adopted will of course change and the resistance will be superior in the Arab region and or however if Gaza failed in this war, the entire Arab world will forget the Palestinian cause and it will be wiped out from history. So if Gaza was victorious, the U.S. will be hit for the second time after Ukraine. Allow me, Mr. Rintawi, allow me, allow me to focus on uh, uh, one uh, term that you have uh, uh, used and I'm trying to interact with you. You have uh, used a very uh, important uh, 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 or you have mentioned a very important uh, uh, term. I think that we should uh, be prudent while talking about this war. We don't want to turn it into a sectarian war or a religious war. We're talking about Israel, that is an imperialist tool, and that's why we know that Western countries are allies to Israel, and Israel is, the, is their tool in uh, the Middle East, and maybe they are trying to drag us into uh, believing that this is a religious war and trying to be prudent as much as possible. I don't want to talk about this war as a religious one or a sectarian one. Yes, of course, Ramya. I think that the Crusaders, when they came here, they did not come here to spread uh, Christianity. They came as imperialists, as uh, uh, people who wanted to uh, use the religion as a tool in order to uh, promote their interests. When we listen to uh, the German uh, ca ca chancellors saying that Germany is a Jewish and Christian country uh, while neglecting the huge Muslim population, we notice that uh, this is an imperialist uh, and colonial 
uh, conflict, but of course they are using the, the religious tool, they are using the sectarian tool in order to stand against Hamas, to stand against the resistance. Look at the propaganda that is being promoted. Look at uh, th those uh, campaigns that aim to demonize Hamas and to demonize uh, the resistance. So. I think that they are trying to use the religious tools in order to pit us against against each other because this is one of the tools that, that they have always used. Yes, but I'm trying to clarify the situation. Of course, this could be a, a valid scenario. Now, allow me to go to Mr. Papadopoulos. Good evening, sir. Mr. Arinta, we talked about this guardianship, uh, this American guardianship over Israel. And this is what we have noticed on the diplomatic, on the political, and on the, on the military level. And also inside of the U.S. Security Council, the U.S. is very invested in this conflict um, because it, this conflict uh, is very important. It is existential. But the question today, are we seeing a, an American guardianship over the international uh, community? We are seeing that the majority of Western countries are being dragged behind the U.S we're not under the goals uh, mandate, we're not under uh, the Soviet Union mandate, we're, we're seeing that the Western countries are all being dragged behind the U.S. in order to support Israel. How do you analyze this? Well, I am certain that Arabs and all other races in the world will agree with me when I say that proclamations by the Americans, the British, and the leadership of the European Union to secure a peace in the Middle East, to bring about a two-state solution, are merely empty words with the sole objective of providing the Israelis with political cover to continue their persecution of the Palestinians. Because, as we know, the Palestinians are a fawn in the side of the Israelis and Israel is the main conduit in the Middle East for Western influence and power. It therefore follows that the Americans, the British and the European Union will give all of the support required to Israel to ensure that Israel remains the conduit for Western influence and power in the Middle East. Therefore, year on year, ever since Israel's establishment in 1948, the West has given Israel unconditional support, a blank check. The West has no moral compunction in allowing Israel to do what it wants, including ethnic cleansing, so long as it as so long as it enables Israel to remain strong because if Israel was to cease to exist then western hegemony in west asia would collapse very quickly and in regard to other countries in the west well America does not have friends, so to speak, in the Western world. America has colonies. America has vassal states. If you look at the governments in continental Europe, they do not serve the interests of the ordinary European man and woman. They serve the interests of the Western ruling elites. They serve the interests of the American empire. That is why they are expressing support to Israel. And I would also say this, whilst it is very evident that the West cares nothing for Palestinian blood, cares nothing for Arab blood, I do not believe that they even care, genuinely care, for Israeli blood. They only care about Israel because, as I said, Israel is the main conduit for Western influence and power in the Middle East. And I should also say that to frame the West's support for Israel over the Palestinians as being anti-Islam is misleading and is inaccurate. First of all, the Western ruling elites have virtually destroyed Christianity in the Western world. On top of that, on many occasions, the Western ruling elites have supported 
Muslims over Christians. So they supported the Albanians over the Serbs in Kosovo and Matokia. They supported the Azerbaijanis over the Armenians. They supported the Turks over the Greek Cypriots. The West is not anti-Islam. The West is anti-anyone who stands in its way. And you could be a Christian, you could be a Muslim, you could be a, a Hindu. If you stand in the way of the Western ruling elites, if you stand in the way of their global supremacy, then they will seek to demonize you. They will seek to destroy you. And we should view the West in that way. It is very important for us to clarify the image as you did, uh, sir. The uh, Middle East was ne the, the conflict in the Middle East was was never really a sectarian one or, or a religious one. Uh, but we're talking about the region where all of those religions uh, emerged, and uh, in Gaza, churches were attacked and bombed. So this proves the fact that all of this war comes in order to support the goals of the West. That's why the defeat of uh, Israel would, of course, have a negative impact on the interests of the West. And that's why today we are seeing a very different international situation. Uh, back to you, Mr. Safuri. Uh, Dr. Safuri. Uh, of course, despite the massacres, despite the, the genocides that are ongoing uh, today, people are trying to conceal those images. And Guterres condemned those massacres. That's why Israeli officials refused to uh, meet him. And he said that over 50 years, Palestinians have been suffering. What could the U.S. and the Western countries do uh, in order uh, to uh, change the narrative, to turn this war into a war against terrorism? Um, and. Uh, and to, to come back to the beginning of the of the uh, uh, of uh, the 2000s, and of course to uh, try to implement the goals of the 2000s, I would like to comment uh, before answering this much. I would like to comment on everything that have been said because there are very important points that have been mentioned. It is important for us to uh, take into account the perspective of the West. Of course, the religious factor is a very important one. We as Palestinians, uh, Christian and Muslims are united and we consider this conflict as an aggression, as an attack. But of course, uh, the right wing in the U.S., which is the larger point of the Republicans, consider that this is a religious war and they are supporting Israel on the basis of religious beliefs. They want to support Israel for them to, uh, uh, of course, to support Jesus when he comes back uh, during this uh, big war. We're talking about a right wing, a Zionist right wing in the West that supports Israel based on religious beliefs, based on ideological beliefs. Of course, we do not consider that this is valid. We consider that this is a war between right and wrong. Why, uh, Dr. Safuri, do you think that those beliefs started to expand after the collapse of the Soviet Union and um, especially that the U.S. tried to use this religious tool in order to face the Soviet Union. This could be valid, but we are talking about a new era, a new phase. The U.S. is trying to use as much tools as possible in order to protect its interests. Do you think that the U.S. can um, be active in the region as much as before but because the situation in the region and at the international level has changed? Do you think that the U.S. is now prepared to face an expansion in this war? I think that the American population is not ready. Maybe the administration is ready. Maybe the administration wants to go through this war, but the population doesn't want to. Bush faced a huge failure in Afghanistan, in Iraq. He had a lot of uh, engagements, but he did not fulfill those engagements. and. And this plan of spreading democracy had failed and collapsed. But of course, this doesn't mean that the dream of the new conservatives has collapsed. The new conservatives in the U.S., and here I'm talking about the right-wing Jews that aimed to restructure the Middle East and restructure the mindset of the Middle Easterns, and they launched the Middle East Policy Initiative, this initiative, uh, or 
under the umbrella of this initiative, Al Hura uh, uh, Media Network was, of course, uh, established and formed, and they are trying to conceal their bad policy towards Middle Easterns and toward, towards the Muslim world. And They have launched this initiative, they have uh, formed those groups, they have uh, established those media networks in order to change the mindset and to change the narrative. And Biden was a part of the, uh, 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 was a senator back then, and he supported this initiative, and he supported the fundraising of this uh, initiative, and he wanted, of course, to change the mindset of the Arab world, but of course, I think that this is a very, this is a huge failure, because in uh, the Arab world, when I go to the Arab world, no one listens to Al Hurra or uh, watches Al Hurra or any other media network that was formed or established or funded by the U.S., so... The, um, the Biden administration did not focus on the Palestinian war, and Trump also did not focus on the Palestinian war. Obama talked about the Palestinian cause, and he faced huge opposition amongst uh, the Republicans and also the Dem Democrats, and he declined. Bush tried also to tackle this issue, but... Of course, he tried to deploy efforts on this level, but also he was not successful. So the American position has had always been this way, and they tried to 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 uh, stay away from true solutions because those solutions cost a lot, and they will have negative consequences on their plans. So. In, in 1982, Israel invaded uh, Lebanon. In 1983, Reagan faced a huge hit in Lebanon because, of course, yesterday was the anniversary of this attack. The Marines uh, barracks were attacked in Lebanon by the Islamic Jihad. And, of course, America has a very large history of covering Israel and being dragged into wars in order to support Israel. The Marine soldiers that were killed in 1983, they were killed, they were killed in Beirut because they were there to, to support Israel, to protect Israel. So uh, let's not forget that the, uh, uh, the Marines worship, warships were, of course, uh, attacking Lebanese territories to protect Israel. Even the Iraqi and the, Afga and the war in Afghanistan uh, were launched in order to protect Israel. And uh, there were a lot of reports uh, uh, that were launched before uh, the war in Iraq that talked about the importance of the invasion in Iraq. Mr. Rintawi, how will the U.S. make sure that the uh, that its goals will be reached? Back then, before the war of Iraq, everyone was supporting the U.S. in one way or another. While now, Russians, for example, are stating clearly and openly that they will not support the U.S. and that they have another proposal, another plan. China also does not support the U.S. also. Uh, what will be the role of the Arab countries uh, today? Because let's not forget that the, their ally, which is the U.S., did not win a war since uh, the World War II. So all those factors push us to ask a lot of questions about the capability of the U.S. in order to reach its goals especially that the entire world today is mobilized. Yes, of course, today America, uh, today's America is not uh, America uh, of uh, 20 years before. It is not the America that was victorious uh, after the Cold War or the War of uh, Kuwait. Americans after the war in Kuwait were very uh, arrogant. They were very, uh, of course, uh, strong in the region. But today the situation had changed. The U.S. had lost or had faced a decline on the level of its hegemony and its influence in the region. The U.S. also is now facing a lot of... Uh, challenges after two few years on the international level and I think that the U.S. doesn't want to be dragged into a war today. Israel is of course trying to drag the U.S. into this war. Israel is trying to drag the U.S. into attacking Hezbollah and Iran and I think that 
there are many people and Israel that wants for this war to expand and I think that Israel could, is most likely to attack Hezbollah or uh, not to abide by the laws that were implemented by Hezbollah after 2006 and I think that Israel today feels supported and feels comfortable due to the American presence that was mobilized and uh, expanded in the region since the beginning of this war two weeks ago and could make a lot of imprudent steps. And we have always been listening to uh, Israeli observers talking about the importance of attacking Iran. Obama uh, talked about this issue. Trump talked about this issue. But the U.S. today is weaker than before. And on the other hand, Gaza was capable of facing all of those pressures. Gaza was resilient. Gaza is resisting. And I think that we today have the opportunity uh, to, of course, change the situation. This is an existential war. And as I said, I since the beginning, I said that this is an existential war. It will have huge impact on all levels. Of course, the U.S. fears the regional conflict, fears the expansion of the conflict, and some people are saying that the U.S. sent a lot of messages to Tehran, uh, or suggesting, of course, uh, going back to the nuclear deal and lifting some sanctions. So uh, only if Iran accepted, of course, to uh, uh, de-escalate the situation and the region and Iran said that this is not the time for us to discuss these issues and this is based on uh, uh, some observers and some uh, analysts that provided me with information so of course the US is here to support Israel but they know that entering a war is a huge step it had lost a lot in Iraq it had lost a lot in Afghanistan and now after years of war in Afghanistan the US was forced to lead to withdraw and leave the ground for Taliban so the the regional situation is changing please talk more about the regional situation Dr. Rintawi so please tell us what do you think about the transformation on the regional session of course uh, the US will not be dragged into war without funding and some people are talking about uh, uh, Arab countries and Gulf countries that were always funding the U.S. wars in the region, but now the situation had changed. What do you think about that? Yes, I think that the situation had changed. I don't think that Gulf countries are now willing to fund wars and conflicts. And maybe many Arab countries support Israel. I want to be clear with you today. I want to be honest with you today. Maybe for some Arab countries, it is not happy news. So there's a victory of Hamas is not happy news. And um, they know that this will have bad consequences on their businesses and uh, on their plans. But I do not think that Arab countries are now willing to mobilize against Iran, against Hezbollah, against the Palestinian resistance. I think that the scenario that Netanyahu adopted and that Netanyahu promoted uh, uh, about uh, his capacity of facing Iran and of defending them against Iran had, was proven to be wrong because Israel is not capable of facing Hamas today. How would it face Iran? And of course, some Arab countries will not uh, be happy if Hamas uh, won the war, but I think that we will not go back to the Trump era. I don't think that Gulf countries are now uh, willing to do so, especially Saudi Arabia, because Saudi Arabia had had enough of this American hegemony. Yes, so this is a very important point. And Dr. Papadopoulos, if you have any comments on everything that has been said, please do so. And I have a question that is divided uh, over two ones. How can we analyze uh, the position of countries such as Jordan and Egypt that has peace agreements with uh, uh, with uh, Israel. How do you analyze the fact that they are facing a, uh, of course, a threat, a national security threat uh, when it comes uh, to the displacement plans? Uh, so they are allies of the U.S. and uh, they have uh, peace agreements with Israel and they are now being forced to accept displ displacement uh, plans. And on the other hand, the humanitarian crisis uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, Macron had two different speeches 
So how can we analyze all of this and what kind of tactics were adopted by the Western countries on this level? Well, firstly, I would like to say that it is very evident that the dynamics of West Asia have changed, partly because of the growing power of Iran and partly because Russia is back in vogue in the Middle East. And many Arabs in the Arab world, from North Africa all the way to West Asia, look to Russia as the best salvation, as Russia for ending the West's rule, rotten rule, in the Arab world. Regarding the Americans, the Americans do not wish to militarily intervene in the war between Israel and Hamas, and for the time being, there is no need for them to do so. What the Americans will do is as follows. They will prop up the Israeli economy. They will replenish Israeli military stocks and they will also um, give the Israelis intelligence information. Now, whilst the Israeli military remains formidable, the problem for the Israelis is not that their military has deteriorated, but rather the offensive capabilities of Hamas has increased, as has the offensive capabilities of Hezbollah. Indeed, Hezbollah cannot be described any longer as a guerrilla movement. Hezbollah is, for all intents and purposes, a conventional army and a formidable conventional army at that. Therefore, Israel cannot afford to become embroiled in a war on two fronts with Hamas and Hezbollah simultaneously, because that is when Israel could be in very serious trouble. And it would be then and only then that the Americans could intervene militarily, not necessarily with soldiers, but by the Americans employing their air force to attack Hamas and Hezbollah. But we should also consider the other possibility. If the Israelis believed that Israel was faced with an absolute threat to its existence, whereby it cannot beat Hezbollah and it cannot beat Hamas, then it is possible, just possible, that the Israelis could resort to using their nuclear arsenal. They could resort to using nuclear weapons. Also, I would finally like to say this, how interesting it is that neither Al-Qaeda nor ISIS have expressed support to Hamas. That is all the more telling when one considers that neither ISIS nor Al-Qaeda have ever attacked Israel or even threatened to attack Israel. That becomes ever more telling when we, when we consider that during the war in Syria, the Israelis treated wounded Al-Qaeda fighters who had been wounded in battle with the Syrian army. Israeli doctors treated Al-Qaeda fighters in Israeli hospitals and then the Israeli army put them back into Syria to continue the war against the Syrian people. So when we hear now people saying that Hamas and Al-Qaeda are in cahoots with each other, that is inversion at its most inverted because Israel has an informal relationship with both Al-Qaeda and ISIS and the world should be told of that. Yes, of course, and we have seen uh, a lot of images and a lot of proofs about this. It is very important for us to talk about the real situation in Gaza. We're talking about a Western front that is facing resistance, that is facing this symbol of resistance in Gaza. And, of course, they want to uh, uh, make sure that Gaza is being destroyed. But, on the other hand, the resistance access want to make sure that the resistance in Gaza will not be, uh, of course, uh, destroyed. So what will uh, happen? Of course, we will talk more about this issue, but we will now go for a mini-report. Of course, the ground offensive is being delayed, and this has led to a lot of concerns in side of Israel. And according to the media outlets in Israel, some people are talking about the uh, fact that Israel is incap incapable of going through this ground offensive and that Israel is afraid of not being capable of releasing its hostages. 
an international alliance against Hamas, uh, the same international alliance that was established in order to face ISIS. This was a plan suggested by Macron in, uh, during his uh, visit to Israel, and of course he is trying to be as uh, alienated as much as possible with the American and uh, West and Israeli rhetoric. He is there in order to support this entity that is the main and sole protector of the Western interests in the region. Of course, a ground offensive is doomed uh, uh, of failure. And this is what, what the New York Times has said. In fact, high-ranked officials said that Biden administration and Israelis do not have a successful plan and no military goals could be achieved in Gaza. Uh, Israelis are very scared and concerned on the military level and the trust issues are being exacerbated. In fact, this indecisive position by the Israeli front is raising concerns. On the other hand, there is the northern front with Hezbollah that is very concerning too, and that Israel is trying to prevent as much as possible, despite the fact that they are threatening Hezbollah and threatening Lebanon uh, as they did during uh, long years. Um, also, the, the huge number of hostages is one of the factors that could impact the ground offensive. The Axis website said that Israel will delay the invasion in order to make sure that more hostages will be released before that. Of course, uh, Biden administration is trying to pressure on Palestinian parties in order to uh, release uh, women and uh, elderly hostages. Uh, Previous American President Barack Obama warns that Israel's action could ultimately backfire. And he said that the huge number of, uh, uh, of victims in Gaza and the humanitarian crisis will have very negative impacts. Of course, Obama did not condemn or criticize the Israeli administration, but he said that acts such as complete blockades and preventing uh, Gazans from having access to water and electricity could backfire. He also said that this could lead to, uh, of course, the failure of long-standing efforts that aims to reach peace and security. Look at Khaled Safori. Of course, Israel is trying to delay the ground offensive as much as possible. This is very important because we have to analyze the fact that there is some kind of um, a division between uh, the military uh, power and the political power. Also, Lloyd and Gallant were coordinating together and uh, they agreed on delaying the ground offensive in order to be prepared as much as possible. But here we have to ask about the scenario that is being uh, drafted or prepared by the U.S. Also, Israel talked about a negotiation channel that could be established in order to make sure that the hostages are released. Do you think that those channels could be used in order to uh, reach a ceasefire or to put an end to this aggression or do you think, or to this war, or do you think that this, uh, there are other uh, possibilities? Of course, Americans considered that the Israeli plans are doomed to fail and they are now, of course, discussing the ground offensive plans. They are identifying the goals of Israel because the main goal of Israel is to destroy Hamas, to wipe out Hamas, to abolish Hamas, and to find an alternative, to create an alternative system, an alternative regime in Gaza. And this, I don't, I don't think that this could happen. I don't think that, that any Palestinian could accept this. I don't think that any Palestinian could accept to manage the Gaza Strip if Hamas was out. So the Israeli goals are unachievable and those goals could not, uh, could not uh, of course, uh, be realistic and, of course, any ground offensive would lead to huge costs and huge losses. So now the plan is being prepared again, it is being drafted again, it is being elaborated again, and they need time for the Israeli army to be prepared. Uh, tens of thousands of soldiers are being drafted for military service here in Washington, for example. An American Israeli who is a Washington resident was drafted to the military and one week after he died in South Lebanon. And 
in northern Israel, of course. And, of course, preparations and trainings is uh, a very important factor. Soldiers are talking about a very uh, uh, hard pressures on the mental level, on the emotional level, especially in the northern front. So those soldiers are uh, being trained for a few days each year and Israel wants them now to go through a ground offensive. This is not only about training, it is also about courage, courage and audacity and, and uh, the will to go through a war that is similar to this one, a street fighting, a street war. Yes, uh, also, uh, uh, Israeli media outlets said that Hezbollah is killing Israeli soldiers on the... Uh, is easily killing and hunting Israeli soldiers on the boarding, uh, borders. So, uh, Mr. Lintawi, regarding the issue of the hostages that have to do with citizenship, uh, uh, there's a lot of talks about this issue. Also, Abu Abayda, on the other hand, uh, uh, talked about another perspective. So, what will happen and especially if, if we're talking if we're hearing now talks about negotiation channels this could mean that the war is coming to an end and this could mean that Israel will face a huge failure what do you think about all of this Ramya I think that we should make sure that the hostages issue is divided into two ones two two issues two axes at first we're talking about civilian hostages that have dual uh, citizenships that were uh, taken hostages by mistake may maybe uh, maybe by citizens of Gaza who were very frustrated and who went behind Hamas, went behind the soldiers of Al Qassam and they entered the settlements and they took hostages and of course they made huge mistakes I think and I think that Hamas bared the cost of this a mistake. So this is the first axis, the axis related to the uh, civilian hostages, and I think that under the auspices of Qatar and Egypt, this issue will uh, be uh, solved. Maybe those civilians will be released, and on the other hand, Israel will decrease the airstrikes. Maybe it will uh, provide or it will accept. Uh, uh, to uh, open a humanitarian aid channel and as you know the EU yesterday and the Security Council today did not mention the ceasefire all the members of the EU and the Security Council did not mention the ceasefire and Czech, Czech Republic, Germany and many other uh, Western countries refused this issue Many Western leaders said that, that if a ceasefire occurred, this means that Israel did not reach it, its goals, and this is a very premature measure. So I think that the release of civilians could lead to improvements on the civilian level in Gaza. On the other hand, we have military hostages, soldiers, high-ranked officials. I do not think that Al-Qassam or Hamas will accept the release of those people without reaching a very wide and very beneficial uh, deal for the resistance and for Gaza. That's why Israel is now taking uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, detaining a lot of people. So uh, let's not forget also the fact that there are 6,000 uh, Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. So of course, both parties are trying to play this card as a pressure card. The question today is the following. The war has emerged. The war will expand. But what will be the costs? What will be, of course, uh, the consequences? The goals of Israel were elaborated. And Israel and America are now focusing on those goals, and they are talking about them openly. But if we look at the history of wars, the maximum or the roof of those goals could be, become higher or it could decline based on what's happening on the ground. And uh, if Israel faced huge costs, um, 
it, of course, it will face a huge decline. And I think in Khan Yunis, a few days ago, Israel had a small trial and it failed. So I think that the war today aims to destroy the resistance. It aims to pit the Palestinian against each other. Each other. And as you know, IDF is very complex. We have the main soldiers, and the permanent soldiers who face PTSD after what happened on the 7th of October. And we have the larger part of IDF who are, of course, the reserve who Israel is now or is, is counting on. And Israel will not feel that it is victorious without facing a, a victory on the ground during a ground offensive, a ceasefire will be considered as a failure for the U.S. and for Israel. Uh, I will now give the floor to Mr. Papadopoulos because we are short on time. I want to know your opinion about the following. To what extent do you think that a grand, is an Israeli grand offensive will be supported on the international level, especially that Macron talked about an international alliance uh, to fight the terrorism? And uh, do you think that they will go to this extent in order to cover Israeli, an Israeli ground offensive and maybe to participate in such a ground offensive against the, uh, the resistance in Gaza? Well, when we discuss Israel's intentions in Gaza, we have to take into consideration Netanyahu's domestic problems. He's facing allegations of corruption and he is also overseeing extremely controversial judicial reforms. So this war with Hamas has been exceptionally convenient for Netanyahu. Now, regarding a possible ground invasion of Gaza by the IDF, I believe that this is possible because the um, war could give the pretext to the Israelis to invade Gaza, to expel either all or most of its population and to inhabit Gaza with Jewish settlers. I consider that to be a real possibility. And if that was to happen, then America, Britain and the European Union would, of course, support Israel. They would claim that Israel has the right to self-defense and by Gaza becoming part of Israel. This increases the security of Israel, the security of the Israeli people, and therefore there will never be an attack in the south on the Israeli population again. Remember what I said earlier, the West cares nothing for Palestinians. It even cares nothing for Israeli civilians. It only cares about preserving Israel, about ensuring that Israel exists. Because with no Israel, there can be no Western control of West Asia. The Americans, the British and the European Union will always find a excuse for the Israelis. It doesn't matter if the Israelis destroy one of the oldest churches in the world, which they did. It doesn't matter if they destroy a hospital in Gaza, which they did. The, uh, the West will always either deny the Israelis have done that or they will simply say, yes, but Israel has a right to self-defense. There are politicians in Britain who are trained lawyers and yet they are agreeing with Israel cutting off food, water and fuel supplies to Gaza, knowing that that is a grotesque and severe violation of international law. But they will go along with it because they understand no Israel, no Western control of West Asia. It is as simple as that. Yes, of course. And you wanted to ask about this uh, international coalition. Could it uh, be uh, to attack the resistance? Because, of course, uh, uh, they were talking about the international population. Please, sir, briefly, do you think that an international alliance in the ground offensive in Gaza uh, under the pretext of fighting terrorism? I do not believe there will be an international coalition aiding Israel. I believe that if the, if the Israelis do invade Gaza, it will be uh, under the pretext 
of uh, fighting terrorism or fighting Al-Qaeda. And it will ultimately be about ensuring that Israel uh, continues to be America and Britain and the European Union's main conduit for their influence and power in the Middle East. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Marcus Papadopoulos, so the host, is introducing you and thanking you for your contribution. Thank you, Mr. Rentawi from Oman. And also, I would like to thank Dr. Khaled Safouri, a political expert from Washington. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Our discussion is over.